Welcome to the Value Yourself Podcast. I am your host, Olivia, and in this podcast, we will talk about being your highest self, overcoming struggles, self-love, and more. If any of these episodes help you in any way, I'd really appreciate it if you could follow and rate this podcast, as well as share this podcast with others that may find it helpful. Thank you for tuning in, and let's get into the episode. Hello everyone and welcome back to the pod. We are doing our first video podcast. Um, I'm going to be uploading this on YouTube if you guys want to check me out. Um, I have to double check on what my YouTube channel name is because it's been a long time since I uploaded a YouTube video because I did upload YouTube videos a long time ago. Um... I think it's the Olivia W, but please do not quote me on that, or it's my first and last name. Um, I will put it in the description notes, you guys can look it up, and you will know how to spell my name and everything because it's a long one. Um, But yeah, I'm excited to test this out and see how it goes. I want to see the response before um, I commit to this. I want to see if the YouTube world will be okay. I don't know if people will like this or not, but now you have an option if you want to watch the video or just listen to the podcast like regular on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Um, so yeah, this is our first time. This is our last episode until season two. Um, we are on episode 10 and once I get to my episode 10, we're going to start season two. Um, So I kind of wanted to do something related to the new year that's coming up. Um, I wanted to do like a success video and this isn't just to bring into the new year. This is, this is tips that you can use all the time, but I feel like it's very important to do, um, for the new year. So it's going to be a part one and part two episode. This one is going to be um, the physical aspects of being successful. So things that you can actually physically do to be successful. And the part two is going to be more of um, like mental aspects that you can think of when um, you want to be successful or need to be successful. Um, I definitely think it's important to split it up into two because physical aspects are pretty they're not easy but anyone can do them it does take discipline and consistency to do them but the mental aspects are what is difficult um just like saying anyone can go to the gym anyone can get there drive there start working out but it's the mental aspects the mental toughness of if you want like if you want to I guess I would say no one wants to go to the gym sometimes you do sometimes you don't but it's the mental toughness that comes into play when it's cold outside and you're tired and you had a long shift and you don't want to go to the gym that's more of like a mental aspect so these are going to be all physical things that you can do to begin with um so let's get started. I'm like nervous. I don't know. (laughs) I haven't recorded myself in front of a camera in a long time. I feel you guys can tell that I'm kind of nervous, but um, it's going to be fine. I'm going to get used to this. I'm just going to pretend that I am in my closet like I always record with my hair in a messy bun and not looking good and just recording and talking to you guys in a microphone. I have to get over this aspect that you guys can see me now, but it's fine. Okay, so my first tip for you guys for um, how to become successful physically, um, I would say my first tip is to wake up early and at the same time daily. So I know I talked about the 54321 method in my other video that Mel Robbins talked about um, when your alarm goes off and to not snooze the alarm and to just press the alarm off and count five, four, three, two, one, and shoot up. That's the best thing you can do because your brain works in that five second window. And if you don't move in that five second window, you're most likely going to want to snooze and go back to bed. And 
we it's a you have to trick your brain i know it's hard to wake up to your alarm without snoozing i know it's a kind of a bad habit for all of us to say okay like i set my alarm and i set my other alarm to wake me up again in five to ten minutes but let's think about why we set that alarm to begin with why did we pick that time to begin with because that's when we actually wanted to get up it's not five minutes after ten minutes after it's i want to wake up right now um i think it's very important for you to wake up at the same time every day because that that is discipline that is consistency no one like the more you do it the more your brain and body come um let's what's the word i'm looking for um not attached but accumulated (laughs) it comes accumulated to that and your brain's not dumb your body's not dumb once you start training your body and rewiring your brain to do something it's going to do it it takes 30 days to start a habit and stick with a habit um so i would say this is a great tip to do especially going into the new year if you haven't already test your strength really with this one um set that alarm get up and don't press snooze. I think there's a lot of benefits to waking up at the same time every day. You can get more stuff done. You pick that time for a reason, you stick to it. Obviously, maybe on a Sunday you want to sleep in a little bit, but if you have a set time, like 6 a.m. on Saturdays I wake up, and I don't wake up any later because I have to start work at 8.30, and there's crap that I have to do before then. I have to wake up. I have to have my coffee. I have to take my cold shower. I have to meditate. I have to journal. I have to get ready and I have to get my coffee, my Starbucks, and I got to go to work. There's just, I'm not going to wake up at seven, roll out of bed, not having a morning routine and just miss my coffee and just go. Like, that's just not how I'm built. That's not how it's going to happen. I'm telling you, if you have a set morning routine, your life is going to be a lot easier and a lot better. So that's number one. Number two, before you go to bed, write down a list for your tasks for the next day. I would say this is very important to keep us on track. Um, I'm not going to go into such a routine because that's my third tip. But for this one, literally, before you go to bed, get out the notes in your phone or write it down on a piece of paper. But I want you to be specific and write down what you plan to have done for the next day. And this makes it easier to not fall into a trap to not doing what you said you were going to do. Because I don't know if you guys are like me, but I am competitive. I'm a perfectionist. And if I write something down that I want to get done, it's in there in writing and I can see it. If I don't do that thing and I can't put a check mark next to it, I'm disappointed in myself. And that's just how I am. I want to create a list that I can see for everything that I wanted to get done. I wrote it down for a reason and I want to put a check mark by all of those things. If I don't have a green check mark next to that, then I'm disappointed. So for example, before I go to bed, I'm going to write down, okay, wake up at, wake up at 7 a.m., drink coffee for a half hour, get back up, don't just be lazy get back up, take your cold shower for three minutes. Okay, you're done with that. Meditate for 10 minutes and it goes on and on. Go to the gym, work out my legs, have a set schedule, go to work, come back, relax, give your time to like watch Netflix or read a book or something. Have like one leisure activity in there and then your time on when you're going to go to bed. There you go, done. You, you wrote it down, you have it in your front of your face You're not just going to be lollygagging like, oh, like, I'm going to get to the gym eventually today or I can drink my coffee for an extra 20 minutes. No, like, we got stuff to do. Like, it's, this is our plan. This is, like, we only have so much time in our day to get everything that we have, that we want to get done, done. And the excuse for I don't have time, I don't believe in it. I, I believe we all have the same amount of hours in our day. It's just how we spend it. How much time we spend doing these things is what's important. We're not going to sit around and watch Netflix for three hours and miss our bedtime. Like, that's not negotiable. Like, it should not be, like, should not, like, you shouldn't be able to have to do that. Like, you need to have these things written down and you need to do those things. There's a reason why you wrote them down. Get them done. Number three ties into number two is to make a daily routine. You want to, like, seriously, you want to go through every day of your week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You want to go through every single day of those, and you want to have your set routine for each one of those days. 
okay? So Mondays, I know that I don't have work. I know that I have to work out my legs on Mondays. I know I need to record the podcast I for Wednesday. I need to um, maybe get my nails done or I have an appointment, doctor appointment. I don't know. I schedule everything that I need to do on Mondays because the rest of my week is busy. If I'm in school, I'm on break right now, but if I'm in school, I got to have like three hours of homework done. I need to do an hour in the morning. I need to go to the gym during that, do an hour when I get home, split it up. I have a set routine. Tuesday, I know I have work, right? So we're going to wake up. It's not a gym day. It's a Pilates day. So we're going to do Pilates. We're going to go for a walk. We're going to meditate. We're going to journal and we're going to get ready for work and go. I want you to have a specific schedule, specific routine for each one of the days out of your week. That's an organization thing. It's a consistency thing. It's a discipline thing. You want to have all those days figured out. If I'm talking to you and you don't have any plans for your week, you're like, oh, you want to hang out this day and this day? No, I can't hang out. I'm busy. Like, I'm not, I'm fine on the weekends maybe, but I have stuff to do during the week. And no one that's successful in our lifetime gets there easily like everyone that is successful has a set routine has a schedule wakes up early and does everything that they say they're going to do that's just how it is so i want to challenge you guys to have a set schedule for every day of your week um number four stay on a time schedule that's very important too like i said you said you're drinking coffee for 30 minutes. Okay, after the 30 minutes are up, you're going to get up. You're going to take a shower for three minutes of your cold shower. You're going to meditate for 10 minutes. You're going to stay on the strict time schedule. And if it does help you, I know it helps you when you're sleeping and you want to press off the snooze button and get going. But if you have to do the 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 method for like every task of your day for a little bit until you get accumulated to these things, I would suggest doing that. So let's say you're really tired in the morning and you're drinking your coffee and so you're gonna do it for 30 minutes because you got to get up you got stuff to do I want you when that 30 minutes is done I want you because I know it's like dreading look at the time and you're like okay I I gotta get up now most of the people like naturally we don't want to do that like we want to stay in comfy clothes and we don't want to get up we want to spend a little like extra five or ten minutes like drinking our coffee and relaxing and watching tv or whatever but you can do the five, four, three, two, one method. Okay, it's 30 minutes past. I'm ready. Five, four, three, two, one, shoot up, go. Like, if you have to do that for every task of your day just to get things done, I would suggest doing it. So, I would say definitely stay on a time schedule. Like I said, we only have any hours in our day to get everything that we need to done, and that's just how it is. And the excuse I don't have time doesn't exist because everyone has the same amount of time. It's about how dedicated you are and how bad you want to do these things for yourself that you wrote down. Um, where I never, I didn't number these, so I got to count my bullet points. One, two, three, four. Okay. Number five, move daily. Obviously this is pretty, I mean, you guys knew this was coming. (laughs) Um, it's pretty self-explanatory exercise. Moving is great for our bodies. It's, it's, very good for us. It's discipline. It's a way to be consistent and set ourselves up for success. Um, I don't go, I go to the gym four days a week and I do Pilates and I do a walk two times a week. So I'm working out six days a week um, and I have one rest day, which I wouldn't even count as a rest day because those are the days I wake up at six and go to work and do all my stuff. So the only reason I'm taking a rest day is because I don't have time to work out that day. I said I don't have time, but I really don't have time. I like, I want to have a leisure day. Everyone should have a leisure day. Um, If you wake up at six and you're go, 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 you're going to work, you come back at three, four, five. I could go to the gym if I want to. I definitely have time, but I want to go out. I am almost 26 years old. I'm going to actually go out and be social with my friends. Like that's just how it is. If I can do that one day a week or maybe like twice a month or so, if I'm not going out with my friends on a Saturday night, I'm relaxing, I'm watching Netflix, I'm taking care of myself, it's self-recovery day. You at least need some time to recover. Um, But I definitely would say make an exercise routine if you don't know how to do that. Um, I can make a video on that or you, I would definitely suggest looking up YouTube tips. There's so many resources out there um, for like if you want to look up 
upper body day for women. Like there's step by step exercise. There's all the information is fed to us. We have it on our hands. Like we can literally look this up and it's there for us. So if you want to have like an upper body day on Monday, you look that stuff on YouTube, write it down in your notes. There you go. Tuesday, you want to do lower body day. You look that up, you put it on your notes. There you go. Wednesday, you want to do a little recovery day. You want to go for a walk. You want to do Pilates. Look it up on YouTube. I don't go to a Pilates studio. I look it up on YouTube and that's, that's it. It still counts. Like you just need to move your body daily. Walking is so good for you. There's so many benefits mentally and physically. And I say like, not even the walk is good for you but the ability for you to actually get up and go for the walk is is amazing it's it's training your body that this is important and we have to do these things for our body and it creates discipline and consistency and that's just what it's all about you don't want to drive to the gym when it's snowing you don't want to drive to the gym when it's freaking cold outside but you know you have to do it so it does create discipline and consistency. So not only physical benefits, but it does have some mental benefits as well. Um, number six, I believe. One, two, three, four. Yes. Number six, drink a gallon of water a day and eat healthy foods. Obviously another self-explanatory one. Um, sometimes I drink over a gallon and a half of water a day, depending on what time I wake up, um, and how much I'm working out that day. Um, cause I usually get most of my water in when I'm working out, but if I'm up at six and I have a long day at work, I, uh, obviously I'm going to drink more water that day. Um, so many benefits of drinking a gallon of water. I know a lot of people think it's intimidating and they can't do it, but you definitely can. It's not as hard as you think it is. Um, if you even just want to start at a half gallon, totally fine. There's some like hot topics out there saying like, you don't have to drink a gallon of water a day. No, I don't, you don't necessarily have to, like, but I personally feel better when I do get a gallon of water in a day. I feel focused, hydrated, my skin looks good, your hair is growing, your nails are growing. I just think there's so many benefits to drinking a gallon of water a day. So I would suggest that. Obviously, eating healthy foods, everyone knows that. I'm just telling it to you because it is one of the tips to be successful um but we all know we all know that we have to be on a healthy diet you're not gonna feel good by eating cheetos and cookies all day like that's just a self-explanatory thing balance okay i know there's a lot of people that say like oh you don't need to be balanced like we're all in or we're all out there's certain things where i do agree with that as or that mentality with but eating healthy like you definitely have to treat yourself sometimes like do the what is it the 80 20 rule or something when you're like 80 percent of the time you are eating pretty well and you're working out but 20 percent of the time treat yourself like when i'm not like planning for anything like a vacation or something i really want to look good for i will have like a sheet meal or have some drinks on saturdays like i said that's my social time um have that one day a week where you do treat yourself. Like, don't think that you're a prisoner to a healthy lifestyle. Like, that's probably the majority of reason why people don't have a set routine with working out and eating healthy because they think it has to be an all or nothing mentality. And that's totally false. Um, it's just good for you. Like, why would you not want to eat healthy foods and wake up feeling focused and energetic? Like, it's not as hard as you think it is either. Um, you can definitely YouTube things for healthy recipes and stuff, but when people ask me diet advice, I would say stick to the basics. Eat your fruits, your vegetables. We all know stay away from sugar, stay away from breads. Don't like eat complex carbs. Don't eat unhealthy carbs. It's pretty self-explanatory. You guys can look this up, but don't overcomplicate it. You know what you have to do? Eat eat your chicken, eat your protein, eat your vegetables. It's like I said, like it's pretty, no one wants to do it. We might act dumb because we don't want to do it, but it's pretty simple. Um, so yeah, eat healthy, drink your water. Number eight, I don't know where I am guys. One, two, three, four, five, six, I'm on seven. All right. Number seven, do your makeup hair or put on a cute outfit for work or school. 
this goes with the saying, look good, feel good. I'm telling you, when I'm, when I look good and I get myself together for the day, I naturally feel better, like, mentally and physically about myself. It's the extra effort that you're putting into yourself that's, like, saying to your body that we, we are ready for the day. Like, we, we took time to get ready for the day and I'm feeling good. There's just an automatic confidence that comes from putting a little bit of extra effort into yourself. And I'm not saying you don't have to, you don't have to put a full face of makeup on every day or curl your hair every day, but maybe just put some earrings on or put some lip gloss on or curl your eyelashes or something. Do your skincare, take your time. I, there's just something about doing something for your body that makes your brain know that you're getting ready for the day and you're prepared. Um, if we're rolling out of bed and we just put our hair in a messy bun and put our sweatpants on and hoodie on and we're going out throughout our day, yeah, like, <laughs> you're comfortable. It's nice. Like, I'm not saying I never do that, but I feel like you're, I mean, I don't know the science around this, but I feel like your brain just is not, it thinks you're not ready for the day. It thinks you just, you're not prepared. I don't know. There's something about it and maybe you just won't be as productive that day if you if you, if you're still in sleep mode, if you're still in your pajamas, like, that's just how it is, and especially with, um, since COVID, with every, when everything went remote, I feel like a lot of us just stayed in our comfy clothes and didn't really get ready, and I don't know the science behind that either, but I would like to know if we were less productive that, in that year of, like, 2020, or, or what, because we didn't, we didn't have to go anywhere, we didn't have to, like, get ready to go, and I really want to know how that affected everyone. But I would definitely say when I put a little bit of extra effort in myself, I am ready for the day and I just feel better. All right, eight. Pretty sure I'm on eight right now. Um, cold shower daily, meditation, journal, and praying. Disclaimer, I don't, I'm not pushing my religion on you. I'm not pushing my values on you. This is just what I do and what helped me become successful. Um, I don't know what God you pray to or what higher power that you believe in. If you do at all, if you don't, just disregard this part. But for me, I am Catholic. I read my Bible every day and I do talk to God every day. I thank him. I, when I put my trust in God, I feel like I am more calm and relaxed um, and I just feel like I have, I have God on my side and he would never disappoint me or set me up for failure. So if, as long as I have him in my life, I know that more positive things are going to be start happening to me. And that's just how I feel in my personal experience. Um, everyone knows if you know me, I know my cold showers work. I, it's my, um, I definitely think they work. I do them for three minutes a day. They suck. People call me crazy, but if you go on and you look it up, so many benefits. I'm not going to go into them since I've already talked about cold showers in like a, a lot of my past videos. Um, but yes, do a cold shower, challenge yourself at least, at least I do, I do four days a week. I do it. I take two days off. Hold on. I do it Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays. I take Friday off. I do it Saturday. I take Sunday off. So I take two days out of the week where I don't do a cold shower. Um, but I would challenge you if you're new to them, do it at least twice a week and then build on from there and you won't regret it. I promise. Um, well, you might when you're actually doing it. I verbally like swear when I'm taking my cold showers, but after I swear you feel so good. Um, meditation and journaling. I meditate for 10 to 12 minutes a day. Some, some of them are better than others. Some of them I cannot get my brain to shut off. Like it takes, um, it takes time for sure, but you just have to be in the right mindset to do it. And that's just how it is. And it, just keep, trying and keep practicing with it. Journaling, I do my reassurance notes. I talked about that in my other video. I'm not going to go into that, but definitely wanted to put these in the physical aspects for success. Um, my next one is have a side hustle or hobby. Um, my podcast is my hobby. I do it for fun. I have, I do makeup for fun. I do wedding, um, 
wedding makeup for fun and it's my hobby and I made it into a side business. I think it's really important for you to have something else that's not your job or school or the gym to, unless you turn gym into a personal trainer, side business sort of thing, um, I think it's important to have something else that you look forward to and something that you can use your talents for to help others or make more money from it. Like, I definitely think it's, it's good for you to have something else that you're focused on besides the basic things that we all need to do, like work and school. Um, my next one is to sleep at a decent time, eight hours. So, you know how I said in the first tip to wake up at the set, set same time every day. That's the same thing with going to bed. And I struggle with this one for sure. I'm a night owl. Um, but I definitely think there's so many benefits to going at, going to bed at the same time every day. It's going to take some training for your, your mind and your body to relax at the same time every day, especially if you are a night owl like me. But I definitely think that um, getting your full eight hours or more sometimes, I sometimes I need more, um, is going to be great for you. Your appetite will not I'm telling when I don't get enough sleep, I feel like I'm so hungry the next day. So I feel like that's a thing. Um, you're more focused for your activities, the gym, your muscles are gonna recover. So definitely get your sleep. Um, okay, I have two more. The next one is to start spending time alone and stop focusing on dating. Um this <laughs> this is a controversial maybe. I don't know, but I definitely think that when I start spending time by myself, I find myself more. When I take myself on solo dates, when I, when I'm not so focused on putting my energy towards other people. And like I said, I do see my friends once or twice a week, possibly, and my family. So maybe my friends once a week, my family, I live with my family still, but we all get together and do something once a week. Um, and then stop focusing on dating. Stop putting so much pressure and emphasis on other people when you know you have to put that energy into yourself first to be successful. Um, this is hard. It's difficult. We are not. We're humans. We're not made to be alone. We're made to be around other humans. But it's just something that you have to do. And you have to trust me that it's the best for your healing process. Doing difficult things like this is great for you great great for your body great for your mental health um just training your body to know that it is you are able to be independent and care for yourself and love yourself and implement a great self-care routine and all that energy that you're going to be putting in yourself will pay off one day when you are ready to be in a relationship but right now if you want to be successful you got to put that energy into yourself first and my last tip i would say with that being said, surround yourself with highly driven people. So when you are hanging out with your friends um, or you do start dating again, I would say you have to be surrounded by people who you would like to be like. You cannot be hanging around with people who do not have similar goals as you or who are lazy or are waking up at 4 p.m. every day and drinking all night. You cannot be around those people unless you want to be like them. If I am around highly driven people, highly driven women who do not gossip about each other, who are positive, who are confident, who have like a gym routine or have like a self-care routine, that motivates me to be better. That motivates me to be happy and positive and it's the energy that helps me. Like, I'm just saying, and when you are dating someone too, make sure they have similar goals as you. You cannot be with someone who does not have similar goals as you and wants to grow as a person and grow in a relationship with you. And with that being said, <laughs> those are all my tips for being successful physically. All physical things that you can do. I don't have any more. I feel like those are all of my points exhausted to you that I do on a daily basis. Um... And if you want more on um, being successful as like a woman, woman and being high value, I would definitely say check out my high value um, video and dark feminine energy. I'd say those are really good if you are a woman and you want to channel that sort of energy. But to be successful for everyone, I would say 
these are the best tips that I can give you. Um, so with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video and for in two weeks from now, not this Wednesday, but the next Wednesday, I will post part two, which is the men best mental aspects that you can do to be successful. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys enjoyed the YouTube video and I hope it works. I hope it freaking uploads. If it doesn't, I'm sorry. It's just a Spotify, Apple podcast, but if this does, if this does work, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and this topic. Leave me comments. Follow me on Instagram at valueyourselfpod and let me know what you like. Okay. Bye guys.